Hey guys, so I'm going to be sharing with you some little discussion things on uh, the different parts of this. The way I like to do stuff a little bit is giving you something that's different than you get out of a textbook because those things tend to be pretty dry. So I give you some examples that might be a little confusing that would show up and then try to more specifically tie them into the AP. So what I'm going to take a look at is section 1.2, which is on the scientific method. We'll spend a lot of time there, and it's not on the AP test, but some commonly misused sort of things that I see people uh, end up doing sometimes. So a scientific method is really just about humility before the facts. Science are supposed to be fact-based stuff. So you collect data, we use a lot of math, and then what is the data showing us? And so you're trying to remove bias from that. We all have it. Okay, but you're trying to remove that from things um, when you're using the scientific method. You know, so you've got that whole procedure that they talk about, but it's really just about humility before the facts. Um, so one of the things is scientific uh, hypothesis. So here I have a question for you, and this is a good place to pause this right now and then read through this stuff and then see which of these uh, do you think is actually a scientific hypothesis. So the idea is if I put the question up there, then you pause it for a second, make sure you read through it first, because the research is if you have a predisposition and you have your own idea about what's going on, um, then you're gonna be more willing to listen to what I have to say, or if it's different than what you think the actual answer is, it's more likely to stick. So first off, brown cows make chocolate milk. Is that a scientific hypothesis? That's not a scientific hypothesis. There's no evidence that brown, brown uh, cows make chocolate milk. The moon is made of green cheese. Okay, um, It's not, just in case you're wondering. Uh, one of the criteria for something to be a scientific hypothesis is one is you have to have some kind of evidence or facts for why you're making the hypothesis. And the second thing with out of that is you should be able to do a wrongness test. So if you can't test to prove or disprove the thing, it's really hard to prove stuff, but you can disprove stuff. So if we can go to the moon, and we have, and bring rocks some, back some rocks, and we find out they're not made of green cheese, then well, guess what? We have just found out that that is not a correct hypothesis. We really wouldn't call it a scientific hypothesis anyway. All right, intelligent life will someday be discovered on another planet. Um, Maybe, but that's really not any kind of hypothesis. That's just something that somebody's speculating on. How about this last one right here? All right, cow flatulence contributes to climate change. Well, is there any facts to support this? So we kind of gather some evidence. Greenhouse gases are things that heat up or hold heat better. They have a higher specific heat capacity the nitrogen and oxygen, which makes up the majority of the atmosphere. Two major greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, and we get a lot of that by burning stuff, all right? As humans, we love to burn things. Um, and then the second thing is uh, methane. Methane holds a lot of heat. Well, come to find out, bovine flatulence, so cow farts, okay, produces a lot of methane, and it's enough of that on Earth that it could actually increase you know, global warming a little bit. So you know, people mock that and everything else, but they've found some evidence to support that um, you know, that could be contributing to the climate change. And we could try to prove that wrong. So that's a good scientific hypothesis.